Hey everybody, how's it going? Let's talk about Friday college basketball real fast. I'm a little under the weather. Sorry, this is late, but we're getting it done. Uh, so I updated lines and updated stats and updated marginal win percentages. And I noticed that uh, some things changed like Weber State, which was the pick of the day. I don't know what just happened there. Weber State, which we had talked about in the video yesterday, they were plus two and a half, I think, yesterday. And at like plus 120, their line dropped to minus 110, so funny. Anyway, uh, updated everything. There's still some teams I like with the points. I like VMI plus three and a half here. Um, this Tennessee Martin apparently plus five and a half looks possible also. Although they actually, no, maybe not. They've only played two games, never mind. So what I did is I went through all the games and the adjustments, and I thought, send this out to you and update in the Google Sheet. This is what I came up with with a, a round robin with eight teams. So, and it doesn't have to actually be all eight of them. As a matter of fact, this is a really marginal one down at the bottom. Let's get rid of that one. Let's do seven teams. And a dollar each is a $29 bet that could win like 550 bucks. Southern Illinois, San Diego State, Weber State, Hampton, VMI, Montana State, VMI plus three and a half, Montana State plus six and a half, Western Carolina plus three. That looks to be the most current, like, if I were to bet, which I'm not, because I'm not feeling well, so I'm not going to go out anywhere near near people, that would be... Actually, I guess I could go drive in my car and bet on my phone through DraftKings if I drove to West Virginia. That sounds like somebody with a gambling problem. I'm definitely not doing that. I have work to do. So I'm not betting today, but if I were to bet, I would do something like this. And these teams, and here's why. This went through the sheet and what's updated was... I still like Weber State because they're, they're up by 49% when it comes to this marginal win percentage. This thing is saying that, that they're so much better than Portland State. They've only played three games apiece, though, but, I mean, it's still saying that. So there's that. Then Southern Illinois, because they have a really high win percentage also, and they're a pretty good team. They've played four games. They're at minus 340. It's a bad line, but they should win because they're at home. Uh, I skipped over this stuff. Skipped over Drake. Drake's kind of doable at minus 280, but it's on the road. They're a strong team. Um, doo -doo -doo. Then we have VMI plus three. I don't know. I like VMI for some reason. They're at plus 142, which is another idea of actually throwing them on there to win because they're favored by 30% in marginal win percentage somehow. Um, Garden Web's only played three games, but I, it's just it's just staring you in the face. It's a good pick. Tennessee Martin hasn't played enough games. Montana State. Plus six and a half. We have them as a 16% favorite. We have them winning in point projections. They've played three games. Um, I mean, it's in Washington State, but I, it says definitely take them plus six and a half. So what's doing? Then thought about this Richmond Loyola game, but they're on the road. Western Carolina plus three on the road, but it has them winning. A lot of games played. Has them ahead by six percent, but they are on the road, so it's tough for them to win that game. But they, they probably cover. Uh, and then this is another option, this plus six, but this is, this is not a strong team. At least Western Carolina is a 21% team. This is not a good team. That's why I think it's a good idea to pull this game off. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, after all that, you end up with something like this, right? And that's what I would do today. So all right, good luck, guys. I will... Um, I'm going to go get some rest of stuff, feeling great. <laughs> but uh, but I, I think I'll be getting better. And um, then uh, I'll work on this this weekend, work on these point projections here to really figure out how to uh, code this so that I get something that's a little more reasonable now that these teams are really all starting to have games. At least you can see in today's look, you know, I'm going to make a picture and send this out in the email to the subscribers, that in this look, there's very few teams that are under under three games. There's, there's only four teams that have three games or less, or five teams, I think. Oh, no, there's these two. Well, anyway, they're, they're starting to accumulate. I don't know what kind of holiday break they're on or when they play. Um, isn't it bad for kids to go home to their fam families to the holiday? Shouldn't they just be playing basketball? <laughs> the best thing they could do? I don't know. Um, point is, is uh, uh, what was the point of this? I don't know. I'm going to work on this eventually because there's going to be enough information. So I'm going to get these things more right and really spend some time formulating this because I haven't done that yet. So there's a reason why this is a joke. And I, I, it really shouldn't be trusted at all. It just if anything happens by accident, like in the previous days, like, I mean, geez, did we do anything right? 
when it came to that. I haven't even looked at it yet. So no, we were way too high over here. Like, right, these are the, this is what the projections were and this is what, oh, sorry, this was the projection for the home team. This was the final score for the home team. This was the projection for the road team. This was the final score for the road team. So this one we got exactly right. And this team did score a lot of points. Okay, that's kind of cool. So you want these things to be in the same color layout. Uh, then you've done it, done it right. So here, this team, uh, we projected 39, and at least they got to 60. But we got this team right. Um, way off. We were way off. We had 48 for a team, but this team scored. Another team scored more. We were way too high up and too low. Terrible. Good. Okay. Good, eh, a little low. Okay, good. Eh, pretty good. Okay, not not great actually. Okay, uh, no, 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 eh, no. Yes. All right. There's some promising looks at that. Um. So we'll go through those and I'll figure out exactly what's going on because what I've done and what I've written in this formula, and I know all your people that are anxious to get this Excel file, which I will start selling in January, is we're gonna dig through here and figure out which stats are relevant when it comes to point projections. And, and I have this toggler thing or whatever. So we're summing up player stats and who's playing their averages per game. And we're also looking at standings, 17, what's 17? We're looking at, at least I'm doing this work for everybody. Uh, defensive rating, yeah, okay. So we're looking at defensive ratings and offensive ratings. When in reality, we could also be looking at average points per game and, um, and combining that more so with the offensive and defensive rating to get something that's more reasonable. Because one of the reasons why we have these crazy things, like if you look at, um, if you look at what it's done, it was doing crazy things like predicting teams in the, in the mid 100s, right? Because it does, it's not smart enough to have a good range for what the points are probably going to be. And so once we tie that to the average points for the game and then just adjust it for the rating variances, this thing's going to look a whole lot more reasonable. I'm definitely going to do that this weekend for everybody. Because it's about time where we can seriously get some relevant, uh, we can get some relevant intelligence on how that looks. So that we can make some more knowledgeable picks about the spread. Because here's what's going on right now is in this file, when you look at these games and you see did the team cover the spread or did the team win the game, this, this cover the spread does not mean that our point projections are predicting that they cover the spread. It's, it's do we think the team's over here? I mean, do we think the team's going to win the game and did they happen to cover the spread? We, we're not organizing this table by, um, by teams and whether or not we think they're going to, um, we think they're going to cover the spread. And what we could do is I can add a calculated field into this table that shows you what the projected margin of victory is supposed to be and what the spread is, and then we can sort by that. It's, it's called doing a calculated field where you go up here and you do calculated field and you say this is going to be projected margin of victory, and the formula is going to be the projected home score right or is it yeah I think it's projected score minus the opponent's projected score which is which one opponent projected score where is that there we go here when you add that you're gonna get a new column that's gonna appear I believe might have to add it Yep, and we're gonna put it right next to spread, okay? So right here, and it's gonna be a sum, and this is what it's gonna do, is it's going to explain to us what the, what the projected margin of victory is and what the spread is, and we can actually put a negative on that to make it um, projected margin of victory. So what we're doing here is 
we're going to figure out exactly how it predicts spreads so that we can then sort this thing by the spread, right? So here, um, I realized I kind of want this to be, I, I, I mean, we want to compare the 42 to 20, negative 20.5, meaning we're thinking they're going to win by 42. They're laying 20. So I guess we could take an absolute value of the number, you know, subtract one from the other and realize that we are predicting that Coastal Carolina was going to cover, and they did. So for them to be ordered this way in the table is correct because we would have had them. So we could do another calculated field, which is, which is this. Or we could even change the calculated field to, um, to, to we'll call it like spread, uh, spread, spread cover or something. So to fix this field, we look at this field. I'm going to call this thing spread cover. And it's going to be all that plus the spread number. And let's see if that works. It didn't update, did it? Oh, no, it's, it's, called, it's a different thing. Sorry. We'll put it right here. And number. I'm going to change the number format here because we don't need decimals. All right, so I think we've got something. This is cool. S spread cover. So what this is doing, we're eventually going to get projected margin of victory out of here, is we'll also change the colors in here, and we'll make green higher. And also when we manage the rule here, we are going to apply it to all the cells that do this. But what we're also going to do is we're going to say that the number of zero is going to be yellow in the middle because that means that that some are very, very close. Like these are very, very close. We didn't think that Texas Tech was going to cover what? Oh, because of the point projections. Interesting. Ooh. Ooh. See this? This is a negative number. Let me get rid of this. We don't even need this. Let's remove that. This is really cool. So now what you have is when you say, you know, we went six and six on the spread with the list in this order, but how did we do on the spread with the games that by projected score we thought were going to cover the spread? I know that sounded weird, but here's the answer to that. We're going to sort this by spread cover descending, if we can. Yep, we're gonna sort it by spread cover descending, and we're also gonna filter greater than spread cover is gonna be greater than zero. And we were eight and four on the spread with the point projections, guys. Wow. Wow. That's cool. I know we're 13 minutes in, but isn't that cool what we just did? Do you understand what we just did? Is we ended up, because the point projections are really going to be the, the gold standard to this file. One, like, just like in the NFL file, there's a win percentage, that, which is this power percentage and then the margin right here. There's that, which is related to, to team stats for the year. That's something that everyone's going to have available to them, and all handicappers are going to have an idea of what the standings are and where teams rank. So that's more public information that's easier to harness. The player stats and the injury report, which are incorporated to who's actually playing in the game, are going to influence this projected score. And that's going to give you an insight into what's going on in the specific game that you're playing, which is why I bet this is going to be more accurate as I get these projected scores to be more aligned properly. How did it do the day before? 21 and 11 on the spread? Are you kidding me? I missed a bunch down. Oh, this is fun. How about here? Oh my goodness. This, do, you, do you understand how good this is? Now, actually, I should say one caveat though. I understand the way that the projected score is being calculated here. And it's, this is dynamic, meaning it's retroactively changing numbers in the past based on the thing it was doing. So, so you can't trust the old ones, actually. But you can trust yesterday. This is correct. There wasn't any cheating here. So it was 8-4 and four yesterday. That, that's pretty amazing. 
Huh. Um, although I have to look back and see what the actual projected scores were. It might have slightly changed because I updated player stats. So it's possible it changed. Um, but, uh, but we'll have to see what it was. I'm pretty sure it's pretty close. Point is that this is now going to be a new way of looking at this. And, um, hmm. and, and what does that say about today? Jesus. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about today. Disinformation. Duh. Let's answer that question. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, so we think Montana State. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Montana State is plus T45. And we think they're going to win by 46 points. And of course, this is not right. But what? What? I guess so. Um, hmm. So this could be a different hard. It's not enough games here for Tennessee Martin, though. But the rest of them, I mentioned them, except I didn't mention Eastern Washington. So I really think Eastern Washington covers against Northern Arizona because it's only nine and a half for them. That's interesting. See, this, these are plays that I would normally not make. I mentioned in the video yesterday how how if somebody could tell me how to bet these games with big spreads, the answer is this is how to bet these games with big spreads. If this if this becomes more accurate and our projected scores are getting more reliable, which they're not right now, so I shouldn't shouldn't promise anything out of this, but they will be getting better based on what I just mentioned, then then this is gonna mean something. And so it's like this is kind of what you do with the points. Thanks. Bell wants a weak team, except you. I wouldn't do Tennessee Martin because of the games. I wouldn't do. I wouldn't do Belmont because they've only played two games. Um, I wouldn't do. Hmm. But something like this, like Nevada at Air Force. Like how bad is Air Force? Is there? I think they're going to cover by 20. I don't know. Very interesting stuff. All right, I've gone on way too long, but um, that's cool. So <laughs> good luck, everybody.